Hello everyone, it's your boy, Danny Ding. My project is about the portrait of Maori by Sidney Parkinson, made in 1769. And I'm about to spit something real quick. Alright, check it. Yeah, this is on the portrait of a Maori man. They the indigenous Polynesian people of New Zealand. They settled here from Polynesia. So long ago, it's like amnesia. 1320 to 1350 with the walk of voyages and several waves. Project best be good and hope to save my grade. Yeah, let's hop in with that portrait, 390 by 300 millimeters of a Maori chief with a top knot or a top, but he said freak, let's have some fun. He put oil from tiktoki berries and some feathers up in his hair before he tied it into a tiki. Yeah, I know what you're thinking and it wasn't rare to see a wooden comb up in the hair of a chief to secure it. Yeah, and they got some beliefs, let's hear it. Woof, official muck was a bunch we can see on faces, arms, and thighs, but only for guys. And we can't forget about the areas around the hips. Uh, the girls only had it on their chins and their lips. These typical mocha designs consist of broad and parallel lines from nose to chin over to eyebrows and ears. Dude, I'd be spinning this for years. Mokwas aren't just broad and parallel lines, they gotta mean something and they gotta symbolize commitment or respect. The tribe that he or she came from and where they were kept. Mokwas were performed using chisels made from materials such as albatross bone, either straight edge or serrated with chisels used all alone. As you can see, the Maori chief wore something that's green. Look at his earrings and you shall be pleased to notice. Yeah, that's greenstone if you didn't know it. It came in various colors from off-white to dark green. It was real smooth with a slight sheen. They be using the stone for club-like weapons. The weapons be big and got sharp best edges. These weapons are the chief's prized possessions. Another prized possession was the high tiki around the man's neck, hanging on a cord, representing legendary ancestors and heroes, but wait, there's more. It got a tilted head, large eyes, look at him, he's minimized, which gave an embryonic look that looked kinda weird. He also had a mustache and a small little beard. Beards in the Maori society were commonly grown to cover their facial mokos, since mokos were being looked down upon by the Christian missionary. All of this religious persecution against the Maori occurred in the middle of the century. On the shoulders laid a flax coat made up of strips of white haired dog skins. The only people that wore this were the most honorable and prestigious of men. This portrait was painted by Sidney Parkinson, born in 1745 in Edinburgh. With weather so cold and 32 degrees, it'll make you say bruh. He died on January 26, 1771, buried down to the core. Parkinson was taught and apprenticed by William Delacour to study draughtsmanship, the study of drawing detailed pictures of machinery, devices, and so on. He was ordered to draw aspects of Maori life and art at the time from there on. He moved to London and spent time sketching plans at a nursery named the Vineyard. No, not the place where old people go when they get injured. It's a place where young plants and trees are grown, also the place where James Lee and Lewis Kennedy own. Lee wrote a book about the Linnean system of classification which brought the nursery fame and attention. Joseph Banks, a botanist when introduced to the artist in his work, secured Parkinson for Hugh a large garden with no hesitation. He was then hired to be artist for Captain Cook's Voyage of Discovery, where Alex Buchan sailed by his side to record the scenery, so Parkinson can focus only drawing plants and fulfilling his destiny. On the endeavor, Parkinson painted tirelessly everything by hand and drew many sketches of various specimens. But did he get tired? Maybe, huh? He stopped hand drawing when they reached South Pacific in Australia. The most troubling incident that happened was in Tahiti when Alex Buchan suffered a severe epileptic fit. He fell into a coma and died which made his dear friend Sidney yell son of a. With the loss of his friend, he was forced to take on the work of two men. The next major port they stopped at was at New Zealand where there weren't many botanical specimens. This allowed Sidney to make detailed drawings of both Maori women and men. It was evident that his talent extended to portraying people as well, but unfortunately as the voyage continued some things didn't turn out too swell. After the stop at Batavia, fevers, tuberculosis, dysentery started to spread. On January 26, 1771, Sidney Parkinson, sick of dysentery, was found dead. Banks and Parkinson's brother Steinfeld fought over who had possession of the sketches. The papers were lent to Steinfeld where he soon came to be wretched. Contrary to the agreement, Steinfeld published the book with ease and titled the book A Journal of a Voyage to the South Seas. Hawksworth, the publisher of the book, used Parkinson's papers freely, but when he published it, he did something a little bit sneaky. He took the papers as his own and didn't acknowledge Parkinson. After the end of the voyage, Banks secured ownership of the sketches. He ordered the drawings to be finished, colored, and engraved. The new artists strived for Sydney's expertise, but none were really the same. Over 500 plates were completed by publication by 1778. 
Parkinson left this world with 280 finished and botanically accurate paintings and 900 sketches. The type of impact Sydney had on the Maori community was epic. Parkinson's portraits were the first visual records of physiognomy. A person's facial figures and expressions, indicative of ethnic origin, is what they gotta be. Tattoo patterning, dress and ornament of Maori in Europe where it was first ever seen. The effect that Maori art has on modern society is that they give visual form and shape to cultural belief systems and express spirituality in natural materials such as wood, stone, and bone, and flax like actually. The function of art at the time of the Maori changed from a primarily spiritual role to protest against the change from Europe European colonization and assertion of Maori beliefs and identity. His artwork can be found in London at the British Library. That's my final bar, but I need y'all to know something. Yeah, my name is Danny Dang. Yeah, keep it in memory, gang.